just a few more and I'll be with you guys.
still got two more to go. I guess I'm taking a break for a minute. <coughs> Hi, guys. My Kenny. That is my Kenny. I love my Kenny. He's awesome. Hang on, I gotta make my way over to your guys' side of things. So, um, I was, uh, you know, going through YouTube, and <coughs> I come across one of uh, Jane McLennis' videos, the guy that's running for sheriff down there in Florida. If you don't know of him, um, check him out. I'll, I'll post a link to his stuff here in just a moment. As soon as I find my way over to you guys, I'm lost. Help me, I don't know where I am. There we go. Way over to you guys, I'm lost. How oh, no, it's not muted everywhere. You sons of bitches. There we go. Hi, guys. So, um, here's the StreamYards uh, link. Hey, Brian, good to see you. My awesome Kenny, my my sugar britches. Doi, I love you. Thank you so much for that text. That was, I needed that. Let me tell you, I needed that. And it was lovely to, to get. Thank you. Um, oh, Stephanie, you rock. Okay, right, so I watched his latest video. And it's just, you know, the, the um, dash cam footage from when those girls, they chased some girls into a lake and then just let them drown. Good evening, Pencil Tucky. Mwah! My Trump said, you beautiful man, you. <laughs> I'm not stoned. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, um, so anyway, it said there was a comment down um, below because I like to go through his comments just to see, you know, what kind of support he's getting from his community. And because uh, I believe in the dude and I, I like what he's doing and I really would love to see him as sheriff down there because that place is fucked up. But um, down there towards the bottom, there is a, a comment saying, you know, I live in Pinellas County. You weren't on our ballot. Where were you? What happened? Well, he replied, corrupt uh, polit politics in, in that county or whatever. And that was it. And so I texted him to see what the hell was going on. I haven't gotten a message back. I don't know. Well, wait, somebody's texting me. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's not him. <laughs> He's probably in bed, I'm sure. But um, as soon as I hear back from him, I mean, I'll let people know, but I was wondering if maybe any of you. Oh, I love that song, M Star, and I can't play it to save my fucking life. I have tried, and I get the strangest looks from the peanut gallery every time I try. Um, it don't sound like Landslide, I promise you that. But I'm still trying. When I get it, you will be the first to know. So, but anyway, I was hoping um, somebody from down there in Florida, <coughs> cough, cough, might maybe know the down low on what's going on with that. Did he get fucked over or what? And holy shit. I mean, I, I got on Twitter and I like unloaded on their... Um, there, that the person that that takes care of the voting and crap in that county, I can't even remember what their title is. But I unloaded on them, and I was like, "Huh? So could it be corruption that's doing this?" Miko, what is? Wait, I'm I've got this set up on the TV, and even though I have a big screen, it is. I'm going blind, y'all. I need glasses, and I, I I can't find my normal ones. I don't even know why I'm trying. Oh, LT men. 
thanks for coming in. But I was hoping somebody knew what was going on um, with his uh, him running for sheriff down there because, damn it, man, two years in a row, or I mean two two elections in a row, and and that county deserves to have a good, honest person at the helm, you know, especially in charge of those fucking crazy ass cops. So if you guys haven't seen the video yet, um, it shows the police not only watching these girls drown for a good five, ten minutes before the car actually sank and went underwater while they're screaming for help. Well, honey, I get that, but his name wasn't even on the ballot. His name should have been on the ballot because that's where it goes when you're running. There is no, um, you know, like general election for those kinds of positions. Whoever's running runs to the end. But yeah, they watched these three girls drown and all the while talking shit from shore. Talking shit from shore. Now I get that it is not their, they're not obligated to, uh, you know, concern themselves with our safety. But in the name of our safety, they can beat the fuck out of us. They can throw handcuffs on us and throw us in the back of their car and throw us in a jail where we are going to lose our fucking job, lose our home, lose our spouse, lose our kids, and lose the respect we've earned in the community because of one fucking mistake. Or one quote-unquote crime that's not even a crime. Well, I mean, it's a crime. It's, it's against their law, but it is not a crime against any one person or even business. Now, these girls were committing a crime. I'm not even going to fucking say they weren't. They were teenagers. And I don't know about y'all, but um, I couldn't tell you how many times I stole my parents' fucking car. I really couldn't. And when I was an adult, I told them all about it. But I waited until I was an adult that I could run faster than them because they was getting old. And then I told them. <laughs> but um, I remember stories from my dad and from my aunt and my uncles and my grandpa all about fucking stealing someone's car, stealing the neighbor's car, doing this, that, and the other. And it, you know, like a slap on the wrist at most. You got, you know, putting the handcuffs, sure. You got put in the back of a car, sure. And they drove your ass home. Now, you know, they chase you into a fucking lake with no fucking emergency lights on, and then they watch and talk shit while you drown, talking about how you deserve it. The thing is, is that sheriff, that fucking sheriff, he put out a uh, uh, statement on the matter, and he made it sound like they made every fucking effort to save those girls' lives. When in fact, no, they didn't. They stood on the shore and talked shit about how they deserved it. And then all of a sudden, you know, and mind you now, James, he has been putting up uh, uh, videos of the sheriff's department's dirty dealings for a few years now, at least. And all of a sudden, he's not on the ballot. truly makes no sense to me. They couldn't get out of the car, Stephanie. They didn't, they would never been trained to uh, uh, wait until the car goes under and then open the door. They didn't have anything inside the car to bust out the windows. I mean, it's hard to bust out those windows for one, but underwater, you got to wait until the car fills up before you bust out that window. And that's a horrifying thing to try and do. Now, if you don't have a piece of um, ceramic or something to bust that window out, 
All right, good luck kicking. <laughs> well, um, all rats can chew through iron, Rue. Yeah, honey, there sure is. I'll grab it real quick. Oh, hey. Oh, no, never mind. That's an upload. I really hate not getting my notifications. I miss so many good live feeds. I mean, I kind of enjoyed it for a little bit, but... Just because it felt like I got a little bit of peace and quiet. But, um, I, I miss everything good. And <laughs> it's stupid. I don't love it. Okay, um, I know what I'm doing. I do. Here we go. Audio. News. Share. Southbound turn to the trailer park, uh, frontage road. This is going to dead end back to the cemetery. Let's get me some units up here and get K9. Just some five minutes after the undercover unit started following the teens, it takes a tragic turn in the Royal Palm Cemetery. He's off road in the water. They're in the water stranded. Cars bobbing around. They're trying to crawl out. Looks like somebody had a window. I see a foot coming out. trying to crawl out. Looks like somebody had a window. I see a foot coming out. Yeah, I got, I got a good vantage point. There's nobody out. 
It's sinking still. No, I don't see anybody. It's going down now. I hear him yelling, I think. This is the Royal Palm Cemetery where the Pinellas County Sheriff's Officer Howard Skaggs chased the three girls to their deaths. The Sheriff's Department says that they weren't chasing the girls or pursuing them, but they were right behind their car doing 35 miles an hour according to their own reports. I'm going to take you through this road. Now this is in the daytime. Imagine this at night at 35 miles an hour just so you can see. That's 30. That's 35 miles an hour right now. According to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department, this isn't chasing. That's not chasing them according to Robert Galtieri. And that's where they died. Not knowing who was behind them, Officer Skaggs was in an unmarked car. He did not have his blue lights on, but he did have his bright lights on running right behind them trying to scare these girls into the pond. Now, would I say that that man was trying to scare them into the pond? No, because they are the ones who led the, the chase, you know. But once in the pond, knowing that the back seats can be used to float on, to go out and get them, and then nobody did that? What if your kid decided to steal their brother's car? Or your brother's car and go joyriding with your friends or with his friends and that happened to them and nobody did anything to fucking save them for over five minutes to protect and serve my ass To enforce, to enforce and to imprison. Did those kids deserve to go to juvie? Fuck yeah, they did. Did they deserve their mama whooping their fucking ass? Fuck yeah, they did. Did they deserve to die? Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've drowned. When I was six years old, I drowned. I was gone. I was in a coma for weeks. Oddly, though, it wasn't until just a few years ago that I found out that when I came to, it wasn't later that day. It was a few weeks later. I had no idea that I had been in a coma um, like my whole life. I had no idea. I know what it's like to drown, though. And um, it's horrifying, and it's all you can do to hold your breath just a little bit longer, hoping, hoping, hoping that you'll be let up. And then... All you can hear is the, the heartbeat in your head, like in your ears, like in you. And you feel dizzy and 
you had no choice but to let go. All three of those girls experienced that. All three of those girls wanting their mamas more than anything. Thank you, it's all too much. That is, your lungs are just on fire. And... Sorry, you went through that, Kidra. I know what it's like. Um, you know, gators are not fucking. How does anyone watch three kids drown and not do anything? Not only not do anything, but talk about, yep, they're gone. They're goners. Do you guys hear that? No, I'm not saying they're at fault. I'm saying they're disgusting for doing nothing. Indifference is evil, period. Um, they were not under no legal obligation to rescue those girls, but they were under a moral obligation to rescue those girls. And I believe that with everything that is in me, they were just kids. And at the very least, they were obligated to remain fucking professional. They talk about being heroes. Heroes don't act like that. Heroes don't watch somebody fucking drown. They not it's policy. It's pol they got some policy. I don't know, it's a wackadoo thing, but because it's policy, um, they can get a, it's like the light thing fucking is a non-issue. But, you know, that, that Bob, whatever the fuck, that sheriff, when he fucking talked about that incident, he, he made it sound like they had done everything they fucking could to save them. But in fact, they did nothing. Why would they lie about it if they knew that what they did was in the right? I didn't say they were responsible for her death or for their deaths. And they were just teenagers. Like they probably didn't even realize that they were going off the fucking road until they were going off the fucking road. And I, like I said, you know, heroes don't act like that. Heroes don't do things like that. And if cops want to call themselves heroes, they got to be willing to jump in that fucking water. Grab their stupid back seat, use it as a flotation device, and get out there and get to them. They had the equipment. They could have had them out of there in minutes, less than minutes. Oh, I'm sure it is. Until maybe, yeah. But 
but I certainly didn't see any. Didn't hear any. It's not like they went way far off into the water. It's not like they were out in the middle of the damn lake. And there was a helicopter there too. I mean, somebody could have done something. <laughs> Kitra, you just named two of my biggest fears. <laughs> Mighty Mouse Girlfriend, yep, exactly right. And there are a few cops that are brave enough that are heroes. I will fucking admit that 100%. We got one here in my county, believe it or not, out of all the fucking corrupt bullshit. But the, that, that stealing that car was not worth those girls' lives. And... and Morally, those, those police officers should have done something. What's the only possible explanation, honey? I missed it. Uh, all right, Oregon Rock, I'll check it out and forward it. Oh, yeah. Good night, Stephanie. Sweet dreams. You don't forget to text me tomorrow. Let me know that you're, you know. Let me know if I got to catch a plane to help you get rid of bodies and shit. I don't think I'll be much help, but I'm one hell of a cheerleader. Huh? Oh no! I just um, you were you were uh, white when you came in, so I I turned you blue. If I unblue you, it was not on purpose. Um, there's nothing that any of you guys could say or do that would make me unblue you without blocking you too. Don't be a racist prick. Don't don't fucking threaten people. Don't dox people. Don't make me cry. <laughs> Is that the, the video you're talking about, Rogue? Okay. All right, cool, cool. She is in Pennsylvania actually right now, but um she she's got her phone and stuff with her, so I'll I'll text her probably in the well no, I better do it tonight or I'll forget. Cat now, how are you? And there was something else I wanted to ask you guys about. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, no, it's gone. Whatever it was, it's gone. It left. Took a walk. I know. I will play another song. And maybe I'll remember. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Ow, ow, ow. Kind of odd that Andy didn't make it in here. He's usually up at this hour.
damn it.
Şu an hadi gelir. Şur. Stupid thing. All this mushy chick coming up. Bebe Lidsbo again. So today we're going to talk about journalism and we are going to talk about some specific journalists, in particular, the material they uncovered and published, the effects and impacts that material is probably going to have on them and on the community at large. Um, I want to start off by pointing out that the material we're about to go over was published by the manual Red Eye. That's a high school newspaper. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, I was enthralled when I was able to elicit a response from the principal when I ran, ran a little unauthorized school newspaper. They got a response from the governor. Good stuff. So good, in fact, this channel is going to send them something. Use it to get 
new cameras, lav mics, a gimbal, whatever it is you need. If you guys don't need anything, throw a party. Okay, we don't care. All right, so what did they get? They got training materials from the Kentucky State Police. They published it. We're going to go through this little PowerPoint. If you are ex-military or an ex-contractor, you're going to recognize it. It's gross, man. And six people just laughed. But the point is, this is uh, these are talking points that are designed for warriors. They don't have any business being taught to peace officers. This, this concept, this mindset. I'm going to go through and hit the slides I think are most important. The whole thing will be linked down below. If you want, you can follow it along. Okay, so first slide, it says warrior's mindset. Next slide is the objectives. The first slide with actual information on it is the warrior's chosen path. And from the very beginning, they have to start to stretch definitions, deny historical realities, so they can include themselves in this warrior image that they want to cast has a quote on it wolves travel in packs but eagles soar alone because they are often out there alone as officers so they have to make it seem as though that's how warriors normally operate and we know that's true that's why we always talk about our great seal individual our special forces person now seal teams sf groups Yes, you may fight on and complete the Ranger objective, though you be the lone survivor, but that's only because everybody else is gone. Warriors work in groups, squads, platoons, companies, so on. This idea of separating the officer and making them above everybody else, and that it carries throughout the whole presentation, um, it creates the idea that the officer is not only more ethical and more moral, but also that they're above the law. And that's a pretty dangerous concept. Okay, <clears throat> the slide everybody's talking about, most people when they cover this, the thin gray line slide. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's wildly inappropriate to be quoting Robert E. Lee in law enforcement training materials today. That's not a good idea. And that's what everybody's focusing on. I would like to point out that the high school students got it right. They pointed to what was said. It's not where the quote came from that matters. It's the contents of the quote. Manliness will carry you through the world much better than policy. That is a wild statement to see in law enforcement training. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you have seen me deconstruct law enforcement use of force incidents, right? If something is bad, what do I often say? Yeah, this is bad. This isn't really the greatest thing in the world, but it's within policy because policy is what matters. At the end of the day, that's going to determine whether or not the department gets sued, whether or not it's legal, because if it's within policy, they can always fall back on the idea that that's what they were trying to do. It certainly appears as though Kentucky State Police, their policy is to disregard policy. If they are being trained to disregard policy, that's something that, well, every attorney in the state of Kentucky needs to know about because it's going to impact a whole lot of lawsuits. Again, I want to point out that the high school students properly highlighted that. Most of the coverage from the, quote, real journalist didn't. I'd also point out that that's just a bunch of toxic garbage. <laughs> Manliness, really? Uh, anyway, the next important slide is titled The Progression of Digression. It says police, police tend to degenerate into the mold of the people they are trying to control. Now, I have objection with the use of the term trying to control. Um, but maybe that's just a turn of phrase. It's not. We'll see later. But I have an issue with that. Beyond that, police tend to degenerate into the mold of the people they're trying to control. I think it's really important for the people of Kentucky to understand law enforcement is being trained to believe you are degenerates. You are below them. 
that's not good. When you start looking at people that way, you begin to dehumanize them. And that's how excessive force happens. If you can't tell, these training materials are appalling. On that same slide, it says loss of public confidence is the ultimate sanction. No comment on it at this point, but keep that one in mind. There's another slide. It says 1% at the top of it. And it has a quote from Heraclitus. I'm not going to read the quote because it doesn't matter because it's not a real quote. Heraclitus never said this. It's just made up. But the idea behind it is that if there are 100 soldiers on a battlefield, 10 of them don't need to be there. 80 of them are just targets. Nine are fighters, and we're lucky we have them. But one, one is the real warrior, and he's going to bring the rest of them home. And of course, the cops are the real warrior. Again, it's garbage. It, it's not reality. Um, this is not something that is taught. This is just made up. I would point out, though, that I do find it interesting, even though they managed to misattribute a quote, um, they managed to use somebody who was opposed to equality and democracy. At least you're keeping with the theme here. There's another one, looming thought. And it says something to the effect of that if we were left without doctors and engineers, well, it would be difficult. But if we were without warriors for a generation, we would be doomed. What? No. No. If the world was without warriors for a generation and had engineers and doctors, we would have Star Trek. War is bad. Violence is bad. The fact that this needs to be explained to adults who are in the profession of arms is, is a little unnerving. The soldier, the warrior, above everyone else, prays for peace. Unless that's not really what they are. Then they have a slide, can you do it on fire? Finally, finally they start to address what it actually means to be a warrior. And it says to make peace with your maker. Make peace with yourself. Yes. Finally, they touch on it. That's really what it means. Because the way of the warrior is death. Which means you can't say stuff like, uh, I want to go home at the end of my shift. Because it doesn't matter. It does not matter. They go on another slide. What is combat? And again, they have to adjust the definition. Because generally speaking, officers don't engage in combat not by any traditional understanding of it. So they define it as any situation where individuals are confronted with death and must, must respond to the situation. So uh, a car accident is combat. A heart attack is combat. They have to stretch the definition and make it so vague that literally anything life-threatening becomes combat because they're not warriors. They're not supposed to be. That's not an insult. It's just not the job. On that slide, it says you must be the one to walk away. Because you got to go home at the end of your shift. But that's not what it's about. Recent video. Somebody said the best advice that I'd ever gotten. Asked what it was. Said you're not going to make it. Because when you accept that, it becomes less of an inevitability. Then there's the slide that bothers me the most. There's a slide titled Violence of Action. Long-time viewers, y'all have heard that term. And since I am skipping around, I want to take the time to point out there are no accompanying slides for planning, speed, surprise, any of that. Just violence. Just violence. Ruthlessness without anger. Controlled aggression without anger able to meet violence with greater violence. Yeah, that's not actually what wins. It's not what wins. Violence begets violence. Professionally executed violence ends violence. And if you want to do that, you're going to need those other slides. Those that were just omitted because you don't care about actually being a warrior. You don't care about actually engaging. You just want to use brute force. That's what this is training. Goes on to say that perceptions and actions are not hindered by the potential of death. 
yeah, I mean, that's true in war. That's, that's how that happens. Um, it's not appropriate in a civilian setting because you're not warriors, you're peace officers. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. If you want to be a warrior, the way of the warrior is death. You need to be prepared to hesitate to make sure that your actions don't cause the death of an innocent because as a warrior, your job is to protect that community. That's your mission and mission first, right? So it's okay if you go to protect them even from your mistakes. Then in red and underlined, it says, be the loving father, spouse, and friend, as well as the ruthless killer. Yeah, that's how we want to think of our law enforcement, ruthless killers. Why do you all have that image? Because it's in your training material. I would also point out that this isn't a thing. Yeah, it's an ideal to strive for and everything, but there's a reason divorce rates are so high among combat vets. There's a reason it takes so long to reacclimate to a peaceful environment when this is your mindset. Because if you're going to be void of emotion, which is one of the other ones here, a mindset void of emotion, you, you, you don't have any. You can't turn it on and off. And warriors will tell you that. You're not supposed to be warriors. You're supposed to be peace officers. On this, there's another quote. The very first essential for success is a perpetually constant and regular employment of violence. Success, what's the goal? To control the people. Remember on that other slide? Regular employment of violence. That's how they intend on doing it. This is disturbing, even more disturbing if you know where that quote came from. In this brief presentation, they managed to quote Heraclitus, Robert E. Lee, and Hitler. That's how our law enforcement's being trained. It is appalling. The last slide, it all boils down to this. This value mindset, well, it eliminates hesitation. Yeah, it does if it's applied properly. This isn't, but let's say that it was. It does eliminate hesitation. Problem is, you're, you're supposed to hesitate. You are not in war. You are not in combat. You are on a city street. Your job is to protect the people around you. So if, if, for those who don't know and who didn't get the joke earlier, this is basically a really bad ripoff of some stuff put out by a guy named Grossman. Now, unlike many others who are critical of law enforcement training, I have an immense amount of respect for Grossman. I do. His work is incredibly important. It is invaluable to soldiers headed into combat. It has no business, no business being taught to cops. That isn't the mindset they need to have. Now, for what it's worth, these high school students, this high school newspaper, they, they got a response from the government. And basically, they were told, well, this hasn't been used in a while. That's fantastic. That's not enough. What was it replaced with? Is it this same mindset? Is it the same idea that the public are degenerates? that law enforcement might one day stoop to their level? Are they taught to regularly use violence to control the people? Like some third rate regime? These are questions we need answered. It's old, doesn't cut it. And the officers who were trained under this, are they still employed? Have they been retrained? That one quote I said to file away, loss of public confidence is the ultimate sanction. That's why there's so many protests right now. Because you have lost confidence of the people. Because you view them as lesser. That might have something to do with it. I would take a long, hard look at yourself. When uh, I was a high school student doing the paper, you know, 
I pushed the envelope for the time. I talked about the Fourth Amendment and lockers being searched. You know, how the staff was allowed to have facial hair, but we weren't, because I've been able to grow this since I was like 15. Um, they went through police records. You have to wonder why. Is it because they're tired of seeing people their age with a chalk outline? Are they trying to determine if the people they fear, law enforcement, if they're as bad as they're made out to be, as the perception? Are they really ruthless killers? Your training material confirmed everything that people fear. This is appalling. This is appalling on, on so many levels. This is not law enforcement. This is not being a peace officer. This is what you are trained to understand before you go into combat. And it even does a poor job of that. It was distilled down to talking points, to cute little phrases. This isn't training. This is a justification for barbarism. And it needs to go away. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day. Do you want to share your opinions or your thoughts or whatever now? Feel free. Um, if you want to cuss or swear about it, feel free to do it now. Because uh, if this gets discussed on, on King's channel, I'd appreciate everyone showing up to engage in the conversation. But without acting like big baby bitches. Skim Doodle, how the hell are you? Have a good night. It's the wrong damn button, Nolly. Pay attention to what you're doing. Well, anyhow, I thought these were, like, you know, important things to hear and to, you know, mull over. You know? Um, well, you're fucking grounded, Skim. You go to your room now. Oh, I blame Eva for everything. Everything. If there's something wrong in this world, look at my dog. It's all her fault. Oh, I'm at home on my computer, honey. You can go live from your computer. I think through StreamYards you can go live, you know, whether you're on your computer or not. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I think I went live for my cell phone a time or two. Stray dog. Oh no, I don't mind if you piss anybody off here. It's it's um, over there, you know. When uh, the discussion goes down, and there's going to be you know more than one ex or current officer in the crowd. I think that it's only right that we hear what they have to say. If they, if we want them to hear us, we've got to listen to them and like open-mindedly do so, which burns my ass to trust and believe that because I don't want to hear their lies and their bullshit. That's my first reaction. <laughs> oh, I wish Trump turned this here. <laughs> um, so he, he said something today, actually, about the messenger. And for some people, because he looks the way he looks and he talks the way he talks, he can discuss this shit with them, with people um, that, are, that look like him or that sound like him. 
without them getting offended or uppity and then actually listen. Um, same with extremely religious people, you know, the Catholics for one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, anybody here that's Catholic. I climbed up on that horse once too. <laughs> but um, they need somebody that's going to come at them from a spiritual angle in order for them to hear what that person has to say. Preferably somebody they are familiar with and respect. Because coming from us, they're just, they're going to hear us slip an F word in there, or they're going to um, see the way that we're dressed, or the tattoos or the piercings that we may have, or the bright colored hair we have, you know, um, and they're not going to listen. They're going to stop listening before you even speak. Just like I think talking to these cops, to be honest, unless you have tons of time with them, um, they are never going to hear you. But if it's coming from one of their own, one that they happen to know and respect, they would hear it better. They would take the time to not only hear what that person had to say, but think about it on their own personal level. Oh, I was going to say Pebbles. That's a whore downtown. What the hell? But I don't know. She might be dead gone by now. But but last, I, it was just a couple years ago I saw her down there by the bus station. But that's a different story. Uh, I could tell you guys all about the horrors of my town. Whom I have much respect for, except for the fucking thief and lighting and fucking evil ones. Oh, are you talking about uh, the what happened in like LA or whatever where a motor a dumpster fire got started and a motor scooter got thrown into it or are you just trying to change the subject and, you know and it's not just law enforcement I'm sorry it's from from the meter maids and, and the local fucking mayors and shit all the way on up to POTUS. It is an ugly, disgusting, corrupt system. And they are all fucking pretty much on the same side. I mean, look what happened to that cop here just a few weeks ago. He got, he fucking ratted out that uh, the executioner gang there in uh, L.A. County. And he ended up getting fucking arrested. Him, not the murdering sons of bitches that are part of a fucking gang. But the guy who fucking whistle blew on him was arrested. Tell me how that shit's right. But did anybody in that fucking county stand up and say, hey, this is bullshit? Nope. And the fucking news said the fucking narrative the same way the cops were feeding it. It's disturbing, to say the least. Frustrating. Enough to make me want to freak the fuck out. And one of the officers that's on my uh, sex offender list was supposed to be going to court here like 
in this week or whatever for ones that they already knew about. Well, a new charge has been brought up on him. Another kid came forward. True to live. I'm so glad you're here. Right, Northern? And there's so many more out there and they get away with it because they're cops, because they're intimidating, because they tell you, go ahead and go and tell somebody because I'm a policeman and they're going to believe me over you. I don't know if anybody's ever fucking been told that. Especially after they've been violated. It's. It robs you of a total sense of safety. I know safety is just an illusion. I know that the cops are obligated to fucking rescue you. Or to protect you but they have been uh, the, the whole law enforcement establishment has been built upon that whole protect and serve motto hell I don't know about now but when I was growing up there was always an incursive writing on the side of the car to protect and serve towards the ass end And now we've got a judicial system that's, I mean, it was fucked before. But, dude, do you guys see that, that hearing where one of the, um, I don't remember who the fuck it was. If it was a judge or if it was somebody from the House or the Senate or what. Going off showing where all the dark money gets funneled into and how um, the judicial judicial system gets all their huge like 17 million dollar fucking paycheck here and and there and how all these um uh, lawyers are going to the lower courts and saying well just just let us lose because um we want to take it to the upper court and them getting this like fast track to the upper courts and getting their their just you know shit on their side no matter how wrong they are because it's all fucking a bunch of bullshit I don't know. That fucking video fucking pissed me off. Oh, hi. Hey, um, AJ's here, guys, so I'm going to get going. But, um, yeah, uh, pay attention to uh, Kenny's live feeds because the discussion on this topic is going to be coming up soon. And I would love to see us have a real discussion about this shit with the opposition, so to speak. I don't see them as the opposition. I see them as my neighbors and some of my friends. And it sucks to be on such a different fucking level than they are when it comes to this subject. But I better be there, goddammit. I'll fuck you up. Zip it, peanut gallery, goddamn! But anyway, mwah, I love you guys. Have a wonderful night. Sweet dreams. And, and Good goodbye. Night.